I think these two problems mean that intelligent buildings will not yet be used for private residential purposes in Hong Kong. Maybe when the technology is more developed and the construction costs can be lowered we will see some of them. So, that's the final point of our presentation. To conclude, in this presentation our objective was to show the advantages and the disadvantages of intelligent buildings and then discuss why this type of building is not used in Hong Kong. Nicola told you about the advantages which include the lower running costs and better environment, while I have mentioned the drawbacks including higher construction costs, the need for careful management and the possibility of technical problems. Finally, I said why as yet there were no intelligent residential buildings in Hong Kong. There are two reasons, the high construction costs would lead to even higher flat prices, and there is also a need for careful management. It appears that Hong Kong does not have mature enough property management companies to handle these needs. Nevertheless, we do recommend that the possibility of using intelligent building for residential purposes should be further explored. Perhaps the government could take a lead by shouldering the higher construction costs of building public housing using intelligent features. Also government trained civil servants might be more reliable in handling the special needs of an intelligent building once built. Well, that's the end of our presentation. We hope you have found it useful, and we would like to thank you again for listening. On our last slide you can see our full reference list, and now if you have any questions, Nicola and myself would be happy to answer them. So, any questions?